govern ourselves. So this is going to get, you know, a little bit interesting. If you have questions or you get confused, please throw up a hand and I'll try and explain it a different way. So we've gone from Egypt over to China, and now we're going to backtrack. We're going to start in China. Next week, we're going to go to India, the ancient Middle East, and then over into um, Greece, looking at how things happen. And this all takes place between 800 and 300 BC. In a 500-year span, all of this happens and takes root. And in the timeline of world history, 500 years is the blink of an eye. That's really not that much um, different. So number one, we're going to stay in China with our friend Shi Wangdi and legalism. And after the Zhao dynasty collapses from taking over the Shang, you know, their dynasty falls apart. And some Chinese dynasties last, you know, five to eight hundred years. Some are very short. Well, the Qin are very short. It only lasts for you know, a little bit over um, 20 years. Um, so, and they practice the concept of, of legalism created by the minister, a guy named <clears throat> Han Fi Zhu. And he said that a strong country needs to be uniform. We all need to be on the same page. We need to be rowing at the same time. We can't be pulling against each other. And he said, so not only are we going to make things the same, but we run into trouble because we keep looking to the past. Oh, man, wouldn't it be great if we could do things the way they did it back then? Oh, man, remember, like, the 1980s when, like, music was good, the movies were good, Back to the Future, Top Gun, Terminator, you know, Indiana Jones. Man, that was just incredible. Everything else... Like, what happened in the 90s? I don't even know, because they were terrible, all right? Michael Jackson was singing Thriller and doing that. Who even knows what was going on, all right? Man, that was just awesome. We could go back go back to that time, whatever. So, anyhow. Han Fi Zhu said, looking to the past, looking to the Shang and Zhao kings aren't going to help us, because conditions now are much different. So using them as a guidebook doesn't help. <laughs> what we need to understand, why we need to be uniform, is humans are greedy. We always want more. No, when we achieve our goal, we're, and then, man, where are we going next? You're never content or satisfied to enjoy where you are and what you have. It's always, I want more. I need to do this. I need to be bigger, faster, stronger, wealthier, whatever. So we're driven by greed. We can never just say no. So the only way to stop that is when our people do something wrong is to swiftly and severely punish them. Right? It's like the old saying, a uh, kid puts his hand on a hot stove one time and they learn, ow, that hurts, I'm not doing it again. So we're going to punish you quick and teach you that that is wrong. But... If you do good, we are going to give you lavish rewards. So reward if you do good, severely punished if you're going to do bad. And these punishments must be swift and they must be impartial because that's what strengthens a state. In order to get us to all go in the same direction, you must do what I say, when I say, how I say. There is no room for questioning or deviation. And he said, don't look to the gods. Gods can't help you. Gods are on the same plane as us. And if they make the river flood, then the only one that can help us is, is us. All right? They can't help you. So just listen to me. So we're going to burn all of the books. And this was all put in place by the guy surrounded by Mercury, Mr. Shi Wang, Wang Di here. And Shi Wang Di begins his reign with an iron fist. He goes at things. He's all in from the start. And he makes some initial improvements. I'm going to make a bizarre comparison. It's almost like when Joseph Stalin instituted the five-year plans in Soviet Russia. Yeah, they made gains early on, but they never 
sustained, looked good, but it never kept going. Well, Shi Wangdi goes all in, and early on, we do some good things. The Great Wall is joined. He's the guy who says everyone is going to learn one writing system. I don't care if you speak different dialects, we are learning this writing system so we can communicate. Goods will have fixed prices. Axle lengths will be the same. This is what we are going to do. And he joins the Great Wall. And he increases the amount of land that could be used for farming. You peasants, I'll give you land, but you've got to clear it. You've got to plant and harvest a crop in one year. So you do all the work. I'll give you the land that's not being used. And you get that, but man, you're going to pay me some, some taxes. And the problem with all this is his swift punishments, you never knew what was wrong in his society. You never knew what was not orderly. When he saw something that was a problem, he immediately reacted to it. You may not know, boy, you didn't tell me that it was wrong. Well, uh, it doesn't matter. It's wrong. And so his people were constantly terrified. They never knew what was coming next. Do I go ahead and do that or do I, or, or do I not? If I'm afraid of being punished, well, I'll just, I just won't do anything. And the problem with Shi Wang Di is, things had been formed, they were established. And what he was trying to do was in between his reign and that of the Zhao dynasty was a period known as 